If you're like me, you may have been wondering how all these people are playing these classic games on their PCs, consoles and handheld devices with such relative ease. I feel like I'm being left out. How can we get in on this? Hello internet friends, my name is Napiet and in this video I'm going to show you how to do it. It's so easy and once you're set up, you're going to be playing any classic game you want, any time of the day or night. Retro Arch is an all-in-one solution for emulating games from the early days of computing with systems like the Commodore 64 right up to the PS2 and Saturn. It works on pretty much any platform, PC, console, Mac, Android, and it's often used on single board computers such as the Raspberry Pi. It's a breeze to set up and includes such quality of life features as a complete list of all the cores you could possibly want and a facility to download them and auto configuration for things like game pads. So no more struggling with arcane controller setups. To get started, you'll want to go to retroarch.com and download the installer for your system. For me, that's Windows 10. I'm going to try and give an overview here since I don't know what system you're going to be using but start the program and you'll be presented with a very nice GUI that is easy to navigate with a mouse and auto config should pick up if you're using a controller to be sure close the program plug in your controller and then open the program again you'll see in the bottom left that it's been detected the GUI definitely feels better with a controller and I'd recommend using one even if you're on a desktop the first order of business is to download some cores for the system you want to emulate so go to the main menu and click load core then download a core a list will come up it's a comprehensive one and there'll be several options for each type of system each one corresponds to a different emulator some don't work with certain games so it's going to be trial and error so my advice would be to download all the cores for the given system that you're after let's say we're looking for the PlayStation click on each one of these and they'll all download for you to test once you've got your cores, you need a ROM for the game in question. Obviously, the rules about emulation vary from country to country, but a quick Google search will generally bring up any number of sites with ROMs for download. Once you've got the ROM, it will generally be in zipped format. Sometimes the cores want you to keep the file this way. Sometimes they want it unzipped. What I do is unzip. So I've got two versions just to be sure. Now we need to go to the retro arch installation and create a folder. I call mine games, but it can be called anything. This is where all your ROMs are going to go from this point on. So drag them from your downloads into this new folder. Then inside Retro Arch from the main menu, again, go down to load content, then navigate to the game folder that you just created. Click on the folder and you'll get the option to load the archive or click on the other unzipped folder, whichever works. This is the point at which you choose the core. And like I say, it's trial and error. If one doesn't work, try another core. Let's try Swan Station since I know that works with the game I've got here. But as you can see, there's an error. The system failed to boot. That's because we've missed an important step and that's to download the BIOS for the system. This is the point at which people get fed up and I totally understand it. There's all these steps, the cores, then finding the ROMs. Now you have to find the BIOS. But trust me, once you've done this step, you won't have to worry about this again. So there are different BIOS for different consoles from different regions and finding them can sometimes be a pain. Luckily, there is a RetroArch multi-system BIOS pack and I would highly recommend downloading this if you can find it. I'll put a link in the description to somewhere that is downloadable at the time of this video. Once you've got this file downloaded, go inside and you'll see a system folder. You can see the majority of BIOS you could ever want or need here. Simply drag these into the system folder in your RetroArch installation. RetroArch automatically checks for the correct one when you launch your ROM, so no need to pick and choose. Just drag them in there, drag and forget. Now returning to the ROM again and using the same core as before, as you can see, the BIOS is automatically detected and now the game launches. So we've got everything we need. It really is as simple as that. Once you've got to this stage, you can pretty much get any game you can think of drop them into your games folder you've got access to the cores you've got all the bios you could need you're ready to go and that's not all once you get familiar with retro arch there's lots of shortcuts and quality of life things for instance pressing f1 once you're in the game brings up a menu with lots of options like start recording add to favorites so you don't have to scroll through the menus to launch each time you can create multiple save states with any game you can add graphics and icons to your games you can can customize the GUI to your liking. It really is cool. An all-in-one solution for retro classic gaming. I could go into much more depth. Let me know if you want to and I will make another video going into some of those things that I've talked about. But other than that, thank you for watching. Sub up and like. I've been Napiat and I'll see you next time.